Dean Aaron here, over here at uh, Dice Addiction, coming up with another video. This time we're going to give you a uh, walkthrough on the actual actions that your mobile suits can take on the playboard. Um, while I'm on camera, Rusty will be doing all of the examples while I list them off from the instructions. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. This is going to be a quick video today, not to waste anybody's time. Alright, so the first uh, action that we have is the basic uh, move action. And that is basically where we take your completed Gunpa sheets and wherever your uh, move is, the final move is going to be how many inches that you move. And uh, unless specifically stated via special action or special restriction, you get two moves per turn. Yep. So in this instance, Rusty is going to have a 17 moves uh, move span, so he gets twice of that so he gets 34 inches that he can move in one turn and so oh i'm just going to use all 17 for my first move action i'm just going to measure right over to there from the edge of my gumpla base and just line it up right there and then that's just a simple direct movement all and right. then pin you have your point to point movements and so oh um you're not required hard to move the complete distance hence of your final move and so Oh, um, you can even cut it down into smaller hauler movements in the same action. However, you can't, ha um, so, oh, for example, um, out of the 17 I have left, I can move five over to here, and then I could move another, huh, another foot right back over here. And then, and you can change change direction as much as you want, but you can only move up to the total total of your final value. All right. So now that we've covered basic movement, we're going to move on to basic attack actions. We have the basic ranged attack. So basically, what's going to happen is is that you're going to choose the ranged weapon that you want to attack with, and then choose the target within the range. Your target then your uh, then it's target your target then chooses a free defense action which we will get into further along in the video. So and for this purpose, we're here just gonna do a normal defense action. So I'm gonna roll my d6 afterwards and add that to my evasion. But for him to finish his attack roll, he's going to make a ranged attack roll, which is two d6 dice, plus the accuracy, of the final accuracy for your mobile suit. And that's gonna be, as long as it's higher than my mobile suit's defense, it will go through and then we will do damage calculations. Yep. And so, oh, for this example, I'm going to target Aaron, Aaron with my, my medium beam rifle, even though, oh, it's not in range. This is just to show you how this would work. So we're just going to say he's in range for this attack. So I get my two dice, declare that I'm making a basic range attack with my medium hum rifle, and that Aaron's my target. And then Aaron and I would each get hit out our 2d6 and then I would roll first so I rolled a 7 and then I would add that to my melee of 6 your accuracy or yeah my accuracy of 7 actually and so that would come out to 14 all right so I rolled 9 all together I'm gonna add that to my base my final evasion score of 6 so I turn out with a 15 and he narrowly dodges so he made his one attack this turn. Uh, he gets an additional attack, and then he gets an additional move as long as he hadn't completed <clears throat> another one prior to that. So now he could either move another 17 inches, or he could make another range attack, or he could even move in closer and try to attempt a melee attack. Uh, so that covers the basic ranged attack. So we can move to the basic melee attack, and that's going to be if he were to take that additional move and be in melee distance. So while um, melee does it have an actual range, hinge, uh, uh, we do who normally just move, move the mobile suits to where the melee weapons would be touching the target. Target. That's just to make sure her that you all know. Oh, that we're just there here to hit hit him with a sword so once again just like the free range attack uh we would in most in most instances we would make a free defense action 
but to simplify it for right now because we'll get into that soon enough uh, we're going to skip that so just like also with the ranged attack we will roll 2d6 instead of um, accuracy we will be adding the melee stat and then as long as that is over my defensive score at the end of our uh, respective rolls he will connect and then we will proceed to damage calculations so as usual attack the rolls first got a seven heaven add that to my hey gundam's melee of six that is a 13. And so i got a five add that to my six i got an 11. okay and so that would hit and then you would go into damage calculation and so uh, um once once those those actions have been and done um um you uh, you as has the hit hit player can and choose to make a basic range or her defense or not defense but basic range or melee attack action and as a counter attack heck for free and then and so once once the counter attacks finished finished the so how is the um the attack action all right so now that we covered the uh the basic attack for melee and ranged, we can go ahead and move to run and gun. So reset your jump up. So run and gun is a is a uh, slightly more advanced tactic than uh, just a basic ranged attack because it involves uh, a move action, a move action, attack. and a uh, basic ranged attack action all in one. And then uh, verbatim, it's make a basic move action, ignoring other gunpla. Each time you change directions, you may make a basic ranged attack. You may only attack each gunpla this way up to twice per turn. Each target may only make a basic defense action against this action. It cannot counter attack. This does not count as making a basic melee attack action. And so, oh, oh for hits. And so for running gun, run. I would move, move my, um, I would begin moving my 17 inches, and let's say I'll stop at 10, and and, and I'd shoot at Aaron with hit the range, um, like a normal normal basic ranged attack. Okay. So I would roll my 2d6, add my high accuracy, and then Aaron would roll. Oh, yeah, that'd be a hit. Aaron, that'd be a hit, but. Uh, so, and then can you go into damage calculation, or you would end the action. <laughs> and so, uh, oh, well. then and once hunts that attack's over, you continue your movement, and I have seven left on this movement, so I would move over here, and since I can't change direction again, and because that's all my movement, I just sit there. All right, so now that we did run and gun, we're going to move on to uh, barrage. Barrage is choose a target within the shortest range among ranged weapons equipped to your gunpla. Then you may make a basic ranged attack with each of your ranged weapons. Each weapon use gets negative two uses and a plus one cooldown for the rest of the game. And this will take up both of your attack actions, so you would get one instance of barrage instead of making two uh, melee or ranged attacks. And so, oh, oh, for this example, we'll go ahead and, uh, ahead and have Aaron attack me, since he's the only one who can actually use Barrage. So, oh no. out of hand. Just, just twist the wrist. Here, there you go. And yes, posing like this is a free action that they may hate, that the attacker, pecker, or defender may choose to do who before they actually commence the attack. Boom. There. There. There you go. Boom. Alright, so in doing so, I will make a ranged attack with all of my weapons. So I will get a one instance of large beam rifle and two instances of medium beam cannons. So then I would roll separately for all of them or roll consecutively for all of them? You would so roll, you would roll pull for all of them in a single roll. Okay, so the, whatever I roll for the first time, it's going to be what all of them are going to use? Yep. All right, so basically, if one hits, they all hit, guys. Yep, you basically press this trigger, trigger on all of them at the same time. I got an 8. Uh, added accuracy. with my accuracy, I got a 13, wait, 7, 8, yeah, 13. 
We got a four plus Rip. six, ten. I Rip. did not dodge that at all. Rip. So I would be hit by all three of those weapons. So if this was the legitimate battle, I uh, probably would have died. He would have taken 48, uh, 62 points of damage before we calculate uh, AP and damage resistance and whatnot. So I'm pretty sure he's only got like 70 health hit points to start with or something like that. You'd knock me down to 10 so if I had hit and ignored AP completely. I would have almost chunked him out completely. Uh, so, so that's Barrage. It's useful for if your Gunpla has a bunch of uh, uh, weapons equipped, so GM Carnigan, um, what else? Uh, Strike Freedom. Heavy Arms. Heavy Arms. Um, heavy Arms was the inspiration for this thing. Basically anything with a large amount of weapons on board, even if your customs, you know, have multiple weapon systems on board that, you know, you can use right off the bat, use them, and, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to chunk your opponent out for a lot. But keep in mind that this target's the closest opponent, not the opponent of your choice, it is the closest opponent. So you would have to measure around all of uh, your nearby enemies. All right, so on from Barrage Fire, we're gonna move over to Linked Fire. All right, so when you make a ranged basic attack, multiply the damage by the number of that weapon equipped to your gunpla. All weapon weapons used for the attack get negative two uses for the rest of the game. Example. If you have an attack, if you attack with a small pistol and have three small pistols equipped, multiply the damage by three until after damage calculations. Uh, they have to be the same type. So another example is you cannot link fire a small rifle with a multi-form weapon that has a small rifle form. So Rusty, would you like to explain that a little more since uh, the rules don't help out that much? Yeah. Uh, so basically, the um, multi-form weapons here, like my high rifle with the bayonet. Uh, you'd have the bayonet form that you can attack with, and you'd have the rifle you can attack with. Uh, so, oh, if I had another medium rifle, but it didn't have have the bayonet form, then it couldn't link fire with hit the um with this combined high multi form weapon here. And so, oh, in the instance of Aaron's Aaron's cannons that are mounted on on that Mark III shoulders, he'd be hitting me for two for double damage. With both of them. Yes. So each of them would hit you for 48. Yes. So I would kill you in one shot. If we were keeping track, hacking this with an actual game, yes. Rip. I'm going to use this from now on. Aaron, I would have killed you already making the actions. I already did this video. I made no defense. But don't start this, Rusty. Okay. All right. So, uh, so uh, yeah, that's linked fire. So then we have uh, hit and run instead of run and gun. Make a basic move action. Basically, it's going to be what um, it's running gun. It's running gun with, with, with your sword. So I'm not going to put any more time into that. That you guys already can scroll back through the video and see the example for running gun because mm -hmm. it's the exact same. All right. So throw. This one's a little interesting. Choose a target within four times your melee weapon's range and make a basic range attack with a melee weapon. After damage calculation, put the weapon within two inches of the target. The weapon is dropped. And so for a large melee with a range of 8, so 4 times 8 would be 32 inches. So I could throw this sword 32 inches. And so oh, how that would work is after the attack roll and defense roll, this sword would end up right here, just right next to your opponent because you just threw it at him. For him to pick up and use against you. Yes, that is a huge possibility. All right, so the next one is chain. You may make a second basic melee attack. If the second attack is also a success, you may make a third basic melee attack. You can only chain once per turn. So this is whenever you land a me melee attack and then your second attack is a melee attack also, you can go ahead and get a third free melee attack. Um, and um, then grapple. Almost, Darren. Um, um, so oh, the way chain works is that if you're or melee attack succeeds with chain, you get to make another other melee attack as a free action action. So that'd be the second heck attack, and then if that one's successful as well, you may make a third. Okay. So Thanks for clearing that up. So if I hit Aaron, I get to make another attack action for free after his counter attack, and and after that, after the counter attack of the second attack, if I hit him, 
I'd make a third, and then he'd counterattack me again, and then and the action for chain would be over. All right, so then the last one for these attack type actions are is grapple. Make a basic melee attack with unarmed melee. If the attack succeeds, you and the, uh, the target are now grappled. Neither of you can move and may only attack each other with unarmed melee and small and medium-sized weapons. And just for drama harmonization, I'm going to pose pose the expose actually trying to grapple grapple with the Mark III. That is a one one hundredth scale. It is on. <laughs> so, so once once you've been grappled, grappled, the only way pay to get out, which is the next action we're going to cover, is break away. Once during any player's main phase, if grappled, roll 2d6. On a result of 10 or 12, you are no longer grappled and make a move action as a free action. You may only break away once per turn. So, oh, if, if my grapple somehow how was effective against this thing, I think Aaron would have to roll 2d6 on each player's, player's main phase as he wished. And until he hit a 10 or a 12, he cannot do anything else. Oh, and then, since I'm grappling him, I can't move either. I can only hit him. Him, I can't hit him with anything big. You can only only hit your grappled opponents with hit medium, small, and unarmed weapons. So you can punch him. You can stab him in the face with a knife. Hyphen, you can pop him in the face with a pistol. But you cannot use who's a giant or a big pig gun like a rifle. All right, so the next action is posing, but we've already covered that earlier in this video and the video beforehand, and it's basically where you just orient your uh, model kit to where it just uh, is carrying out the action that you wish it to carry out, basically, and to make it look cooler. Um, so, boom, posing. Uh, activate... Uh, basically, just like in any any uh, common day game, uh, you know, like press F to pay respects or uh, press E to uh, activate to use like a consumable or anything. This basically, if there is anything on the map, like a, a certain object that uh, like landmines, uh, time delayed explosives, uh, you know, things like that, vehicles. You can use this to activate them and then gain their respective properties or act it, uh, or you know set a timer for them. Yeah, and then it also works with using systems as well. How has any effects of your skills and classes and your field type? All right, so the next uh, free action is pick up drop. Basically, I mean that's self-explanatory. Um, so whenever I threw the sword over here, Aaron on his next turn could uh, take it and just. Put it right there. Well, it didn't fit in its hand, but if it had fit in its hand, it just Aaron would then be able to use who's my own sword against me. The hand's not big enough, homie. There we go. Okay. Boom! I picked it up. I got a sword. All right. So then, now we make it to basic defense actions. This is basically whenever an opponent attacks you. This is the role that you have to do right off the bat, anyway. This is what d determines if their attack makes it through or not, and. Uh, it is your guard, per se. Um, ne up next we have dodge. Dodge is the defense action. Make a defense roll, and if it succeeds, move up to half your basic move stat. So uh, if you're getting ganged up on, um, and you know things aren't looking good, and you can just, uh, if, say your movement speed is 18, and within like six inches of terrain, there's uh, an archway that would provide you cover or something that would just lessen the amount of damage you take, you could dodge out of the way and just backtrack. And, you know, it would help you get into a better advantageous positioning. And you'd be out of the way in case they were chaining. True. Uh, up next, we got block. Block is a defense action. Make a defense roll. And if it fails, uh, redirect the damage to any number of shields equipped to your gunpla. If uh, if the shield would be destroyed but there is leftover damage, move your gunpla the opposite direction of the the attacker X inches. X is equal to the leftover damage after any shields used to block have been destroyed. If your gunpla would hit any 3D terrain or the edge of the field, stop your gunpla there and you take 5 damage uh, straight to the hit points 
and you get negative one move action during your next turn. So basically, uh, just like in any Gundam anime, you know, shields are strong. They're not unbreakable. You're going to get knocked back if you get hit by something hard. But, you know, plot armor. Uh, you take a little bit of damage. You're not dead. Your shield did what it was supposed to, save your life. Uh, up next, we have parry, which in any good Gundam anime is going to be the beam saber fights. Uh, so then now we have uh, defense action. Make a defense roll. Add your melee instead of your evasion. Choose one of your melee weapons. If the attack hits, if the attack hits, reduce the damage. If the attack hits, reduce the damage by your chosen melee weapon's damage. If the attack is a critical hit, your weapon is destroyed. Yep. So, so if, if my def if my roll is a critical, yeah. So if you were attacking me, I'd I'd block it with that bayonet. And if it was a critical hit, that ba that bayonet's gone. Why is that? Is critical hits bad in this situation? Yes. Okay, cool. I was about to say why. Those are usually good. Well, that's the thing. If you critical hit, you're destroying your opponent's weapon they're blocking with. Oh, rip a ronies. All right. So next up, we got shoot down, which is defense action. Make a defense roll and add your accuracy instead of your evasion. Choose one of your ranged weapons. If the attack... If the attack hits, reduce the damage by your chosen ranged weapon damage. This causes the weapon to lose one use as if it had attacked. All right, so give me an example of this. So if your Zeta shot at me with its beam rifle, um, instead of kind of adding my evasion for her, her basic defense roll, I'd add my accuracy and choose my uh, my own beam rifle. If your her attack still hit. Um, I'm basically shooting down on your shot with mine, but since your shot's stronger, hunger, it, part of it's still going to hit me. Ah, okay. It's like Dragon Ball Z. Pretty Beam much. struggling. Oh yeah, beam struggles. Alright, next up we have support. When a teammate or ally within your base movement makes a defense action, move your gunplow within three inches of your teammate or ally. Choose a defense action. Instead of making a defense roll for that, action at 1d6 to your teammate or ally's defense roll and if they succeed or fail you succeed or fail with them if you both fail you will get hit by the attack as well example if you choose shoot down you may ignore or wait no never mind this is an italics if you choose shoot down you may ignore the move effect and can't be hit by this attack if you both fail this roll all right so explain that one rest so so basically if aaron here here and i are fighting someone and and um, say it's a boss suit like the Psycho Gundam, um, and I'm over here fighting someone, someone who's trying to get in my way of helping him, I can just move over here if Aaron's about to get attacked, and so oh, for his defense roll, instead of rolling 2, he'll roll 3d6. Woo! But if we still fail after that, we both get hit. Um, no! If I... If I use a ranged weapon instead head of a, or yeah, if I use a ranged weapon instead, I don't have to move next to him, and if we fail, he's the only one who gets hit. Wow, guys, what a team player. All right, so the last one that we have is uh, backup. When a teammate or ally within your base move makes an attack action, choose an attack action with one attack action cost and move within the chosen weapon's range. Instead of making the attack roll for that attack action, add 1d6 to your opponent or allied's attack roll. If the attack hits or misses, yours does the same. So basically, if Aaron decides to attack the boss, boss and I choose, I can choose a melee hey, attack, or let me see. It's ranged. Oh, ranged, yeah. Uh, so. It's a choose an attack action, oh, so you can choose attack yeah. or melee. So, oh, ranged just like melee. with... Uh, just like with support, if I, I use who's a melee, I'm going to move within melee range of the target. If I choose a range action, you don't have to move as long as the target's within in your range. And so, um, so for the attack roll, instead of 2d6, it'd be 3d6, just like with support. And you both fail, and you both fail, fail or succeed together. I'm pretty sure with a 13... Off of 3d6, that's a fail. Yeah. All right. And I think, guys, I think all we were going to do this video was cover the basics for all of the uh, the basic actions for attacking, blocking, 
or attack, defense, and movement. And then next week we will get uh, get into systems and start explaining how those work and how uh, choosing the best one for your Gundam would work out and also how some of them have restrictions based upon the, mo uh, the mobile suit in itself. Okay guys, guys, thank you for tuning in. And um, um, thanks again to our wonderful host Chip Knight who owns Dice Addiction Games and More over on, on 11th and Yale in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, anyone who's in Tulsa, stop by the store. They have a great selection of Gunpla as well as many other gaming products. All right, and without further ado, we're going to wrap up our night. Uh, thanks for hopefully tuning in and watching the video. If you like it, uh, leave a like, a comment, show and support for the channel. And uh, If Chip Hip has us on YouTube finally, go ahead and click subscribe. And uh, we'll be back next Monday with another exciting episode of uh, Gunpla Battle Friends and More. Next time on Gunpla Battle Z. <laughs> oh my god, I hate you. All right, <laughs> cut us out.